Hello, Baller Beautiful People! Hi, I'm Shing. If you're new to my channel, welcome. And for those of you who continuously watch and support my videos, thank you so much. So for this vlog, it won't be an unboxing video, skincare video, or a makeup video. So for this vlog, it will be how I got my permanent residency here in Australia. So if you're not interested about this vlog, you can try to skip this vlog by clicking the link on the right upper corner of your screen and you will find a lot of other vlogs. But if you're interested and if you guys are ready, let's begin. Actually, I'm a little bit hesitant about filming this vlog. It is because I'm not so sure if this vlog will inspire other people or it will make them think twice about going to Australia. But I thought of giving it a go since it is also a success story. So if you're a nurse and you're planning to move here in Australia, I hope this video will help you. So to give you a brief background about myself, I took English exam and then I left my 7-year theater nurse job in the Middle East or in Kuwait. I took the 1-year study or the adaptation program or the conversion program to obtain a bachelor of science in nursing degree here in australia actually there are two pathways it is either the the conversion program which the one i took or the bridging program which is like for three or six months i think but i think they have abolished that program already and they are in oba which i'm not going to talk about this time so as soon as i finished my nursing degree i immediately applied for nursing registration so for you to be able to work in australia as a registered nurse you have to have a license and that license you have to apply it in APRA or the Australian Health Practitioner Regulation Agency. So as soon as I got my registration, I immediately applied for ANMAC or Australian Nursing and Midwifery Accreditation Council. So what does ANMAC do? ANMAC assess the skills of the nurses and midwives who want to migrate to Australia. To ANMAC, that means if the applicant has the nursing and midwifery qualifications and experience needed to apply for a permanent resident here in Australia. So once your skill assessment is complete, ANMAC will email you letter of determination to give you the outcome or to provide you the outcome of your assessment. So which means it will determine how many years of experience that ANMAC has accredited from you. So what is next after ANMAC? So for you to be able to apply as a permanent re resident a permanent resident here in Australia, you have to be invited for a certain visa. So for my situation, I applied for the point tested stream or the 189. So what this visa 189 visa 189 is point tested stream or independent visa which means you are not sponsored by a company you are not sponsored by the state or you're not sponsored by your family so the points that you have are all your points so how to apply for this visa 189 or, or the independent visa or the point tested stream so there are six eligibility requirements for you to be able to apply for visa 189 so first your occupation has to be relevant you have to have a relevant occupation. So Australia has skilled occupation list, which I will put the link below in my description box for you to be able to check if your occupation is listed in the website. And then second, you have to have letter of determination or your skills has to be assessed, which in my case, because I'm a nurse, is assessed by ANMAP, which is the specific body that assesses the skills of a nurse like me. And then third one is you have to have a competent English. Fourth one is for you to be under 45 years of age fifth one is for you to have 65 minimum um pr points and sixth you have to be invited by home affairs for you to be able to apply for this visa so from where you will get your PR points? So there are different points criteria for you to be able to get your PR points. So first, age, English eligibility, skilled employment experience, so both overseas and um, in Australia, educational qualifications, specialist education qualification, Australian study requirement, professional year in Australia, credential community language, study in regional Australia, and partner skill. So for my case, the main criteria that I got my PR points is from my age, my English exam, my work experience, and my qualification. So from all those criteria, I've got a total of 65 points. So once I'm eligible, because I already have my 65 points, I applied for expression of interest in skill select. So what is skill select? Skill select 
is an online platform for you to apply, for you to be able to apply expression of interest. So why do we have to apply for expression of interest? If you are an overseas worker, skilled worker, or a business um, person, and you would like to migrate to Australia, you have to apply for expression of interest, and it should be done in Skill Select. So take note, Skill Select, um, it is done online, and there's no fee in doing that. So once I have done my um, expression of interest, it was just 65 points. So it's just like um, the borderline or just the passing rate. So I checked my PR points and I checked on which category I will be able to increase my points because the higher the points, the more possibility that you will be invited. So we have to be invited for us to be able to apply for 189. So um, when I checked my qualifications, I I thought of increasing my English exam or making it superior for me to be for me to be able to increase my points. So on February 9, I have taken another English exam for me to be able to increase my points, and luckily I got my superior points. And after that, I immediately updated my expression of interest and. From there, I got 75 points. Soon after, the invitation round for Visa 189 is every 11th of the month. So as soon as February 11th, they invited me to apply for Visa 189 or the Skilled Independent Visa. So once you're invited, you are given 60 calendar days for you to apply for the specific visa that you have been invited. And during that time, your expression of interest is locked. It means you cannot update anything on your expression of interest. You cannot, for example, you, you want to add more points you cannot do that you have to wait after 60 calendar days until such time that you will be able to access your account again so on february 29 i submitted all the requirements needed for visa 189 so what are the documents that i have submitted for my visa application so mainly it is like for your identification your passport your birth certificate and then your um character um references which is your police clearances your police clearances in the Philippines and any country that you have worked for more than 12 months or for at least 12 months, you have to have a police clearance. For us in the Philippines, we use NBI. And then since I'm already more than one year here in Australia, I have to provide as well AFP, which is Australian Federal Police Clearance. I also have provided skilled employment experience, which is my certificate of employment from my all other um, employers. And also my educational qualifications. I have provided all my transcript of records from the other universities that I have studied and also my English language skills. So once I have submitted all my requirements, automatically Australia will provide you re Bridging Visa A which lets you stay in Australia while waiting for the result of your permanent residency visa application. So there is also Bridging Visa B which you have to apply for you to be able to go outside Australia because with Bridging Visa A, you're not allowed to go outside Australia or travel outside Australia. So for my case, um, they have given me Bridging Visa A which lets, lets me stay in Australia, but bridging visa A will only be activated once my current visa is um, expired. So in my case, I'm still holding student visa during that time because I have studied another, another vocational course. It will finish around October. So during that time that I have applied for my bridge, visa 189, I'm still under student visa, which means I can only work 20 hours per week. And also, if you have a dependent, you have to pay for full tuition fee. And also, um, once you have applied for Visa 189, Australia will automatically give you access to, to their healthcare system, which means they will give you Medicare or um, interim card, which lets you go to the doctors or have an appointment for free. So once you have submitted everything, it's just waiting game. So you will just wait if they will contact you or just they will just immediately approve your visa. So for my case, they have contacted me June of the same year or June 2019 and asked for another AFP or Australian Federal Police clearance because they would like my middle name also to be included in checking my name. So it means for your, ex for example, your name is Jose Rizal. It should be Jose Rizal and also Jose Protasio Rizal. So the 
three names should be included in your um, name check. And also, they have asked for my son to have a medical exam because during that time of application, their system did not require my son to go for a medical exam. It's only me. And lastly, they have asked for further evidence on my previous work, which is which is the one in Kuwait. Because during that time of application, so I have just submitted my employment certificate. So now they're asking further if I could provide a payslip, a contract, a bank statement, a tax return, a group certificate, and a superannuation. Okay, in the Middle East, for those of you who doesn't know, we don't have tax. We don't pay tax in the Middle East, which means I will not be able to give tax return. And also bank statement, I don't have anymore. And also, we don't have superannuation as well in the Middle East. I mean, we don't have the group certificate that they're asking me. During this time, I have provided them the contract and also payslip. So payslip, what do they need from your payslip? So they will require you to um, to submit at least one payslip for every three months of one year. So once I have submitted everything, again, it's waiting game. And then on January, I have to update my passport. It is because it's already expired. So I have updated my passport and then I didn't hear from them anything. Again, only so on May 2020, they asked for further evidence on my previous work which is the one in the Middle East, and also to update my Form 18. It is because I have changed my passport. So as what I have said, for the evidence of employment, we don't have superannuation, we don't have tax returns, we don't have group certificates, I don't have bank statement anymore, I already have provided them my salary certificate, I have provided them my contract, I have provided them my employment certificate. So what's next? So I thought of, for me to be able to provide them further evidence that have worked in the Middle East, I have I have thought of giving them a copy of all my working visas or residency permits in the Middle East, which sadly, they are all in Arabic, a minimal translation in English, which means I have to have it translated into English, which cost me more or less $500 for me to have my seven-year working permits translated into English. And also during the case officer contact on May 2020, they also asked me to go for, for another medical exam. It is because the one that I have provided or, or the one that I have done before is already expired, which again cost me $500. I also have provided stat declaration, which means, or a statutory declaration, which means, or which states I can no longer provide those requirements that they are asking me. And on September of 2020, they have asked me again for another AF. It is because my Australian Federal Police clearance has already been expired. So I have to do another AFP. And soon after that, they have granted my permanent residency. Whew. Well done, self. So my PR application is never easy. There are a lot of people saying that, oh, you're already there. It will be easier for you. No, it's never easy. We have our own struggles in life. So this PR application made me realize a few things. First is to trust God's perfect time. And also patience is a virtue. If you are applying for a permanent residency or if you already applied for a permanent residency, what I can advise you guys is to just pray. Trust the process. Don't get stressed. Find an activity for yourself. So for me, during this period, I have learned how to bake. I have grow plants. I have started vlogging during that time. And also make a backup plan. That's one thing for sure. Things didn't work out well or didn't work out the way we wanted it to be. This is really worth the wait. I know for sure that now I will be able to provide a greener pasture, a better future for my son. Furthermore, dreams do come true, yes? But you have to work hard for you to be able to get those dreams. And that's it for my blog, guys. I hope you like this video. If you do, please click the like button. And also, if you haven't subscribed yet, please do subscribe. And also, comment down below if you would like to hear more about my, my journey here in Australia, how I became a registered nurse or all those stuff. If you have any questions, you can comment down below or can just privately message me if you're happy to do that. And um, and don't forget to click the notification bell so you will be notified once I have another video. Thank you so much for watching. You said we had it all. That shit would drive me crazy. Cause outside, outside is no feelings, baby. You say it's hard to tell what I've been thinking lately. But behind closed doors, I'm a fool for your love.